QuickBooks Online 2024 Bank Reconciliation Month Number One Deposits. Get ready and some coffee because we get things done on schedule with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening the major financial statement reports as we do every time. Reports on the left. In the favorites, right-click in the balance sheet to open link in a new tab. Right-click in profit and loss to open link in a new tab. And right-click in the trial balance to open the link. Tabbing to the right, the hamburger needs to be closed. We're going to change the range. 010124 tab, 022924 tab. Let's do the drop down on the month by month and run it. And then we'll tab to the right, close up the hamburger and then change the range, 010124 tab, 022924 tab. Want to see a month by month, side by side. Once again, refreshing the report, tabbing to the right. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product, because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Hamburger, close another time. Range, change, 010124 tab, 022924 tab, and then dropping it down month by month, run it. Let's go back to the balance sheet. You will recall that we've been thinking about the bank reconciliation process in general, noting that it's one of the major internal controls that every business should do, large and small, whether you use bank feeds or don't use bank feeds. And we note that the beginning bank reconciliation process has that beginning balance issue making it more difficult oftentimes than the following bank reconciliations. So noting that, we've noted that, we're going to move forward with the normal bank reconciliation process starting with the deposit. So we're going to go over here in our bank statement. The bank statement has an ending balance of the 61 24185 our book balance has 88, 8, 10, 27. So now we're going to do the reconciliation process. To do that, let's go to the first tab, go down to the transactions. This is where I like to do it. And then remember the bank transactions are over here. We'll talk about bank feeds more in a future course or section. They can help and be part of the reconciliation process, but are not in and of themselves the bank reconciliation. Let's go to the reconcile tab and we choose we chose the checking account last time and started the reconciliation process. If you haven't started it, then you're going to have some beginning numbers to fill. Let me show you what those look like. We're going to go into the resume the bank reconciliation and then if we have the edit info up top, this is that beginning balance information or that beginning information. We had 0 for the beginning balance. We noted that that's a problem because we had 30,000 over here. So we're gonna have an issue with that. We're gonna deal with that later. We're just gonna move forward for now. 61,241, that's the ending balance that we pop, we put in manually, we just typed it in there. And then the cutoff date, 13124, that's the cutoff date of our uh, financial statement. And then we had nothing that we're gonna enter a transaction for. These are kind of like we talked about before, I don't like legacy things. I don't think most people use them anymore because if you have the bank feeds, you will have recorded them. So I basically ignore this stuff. And if I need to record something, I will record it myself. So let's go ahead and close it. 
recalling that up top, I'm going to uncheck everything down here. We have then the comparison of the statement ending balance, which we just typed in there, and the cleared balance. These two need to be exactly the same in order for the difference to be zero, allowing us to properly reconcile without entering an, an entry, an adjusting entry, which you don't want to do because it'll really lower the quality of your bank reconciliation if you do that. So, so we noted that, the, that this cleared balance now is comprised of the beginning balance minus the payments and the deposits. The beginning balance is a problem because it should be populated with the cleared balance on the bank statement due to it being there from the prior period. It's not as we discussed before for multiple reasons. One, QuickBooks just didn't put it in there because of the way we put the beginning balance on the books or something. And two, even if it was there, it's at 25,000 instead of at the 30,000. So I'm gonna deal with that later. First, I wanna just think about the deposits. Now, if we put the deposits in place, I should get to an ending deposit number that should total what's on our uh, bank statement. And the deposits should be easy for most people because the general idea would be that if it's on the bank statement, it should be on our books, right? Because the bank statement usually is not going to be uh, wrong. If it's not on our books and it's on the bank statement, it's likely that we're gonna have to add it to our books. If it's on our books, however, but not on the bank statement, then it might be the case that it's still okay because it's an outstanding deposit. Even with electronic transfers, if we make the deposit on our end, it might not clear the bank for a few days. So we could have some outstanding deposits that we know will clear because we can check the bank account after the cutoff date and see that they are outstanding. If that is the case, then they're gonna be a reconciling outstanding item in the current period. Now, a few things to note here. Sometimes people have problems with the deposit side of things because what happens is they, they're going to say, okay, what if you had 65000 over here and then on our side, we saw deposits that I'd have to check off three different things that add up to 65000 That could happen uh, and, and that would, if, if that does happen, that would be an indication that you don't have a very good or you could probably improve upon your your bookkeeping system and why would that be the case if i if i go over to my flow chart over here this is a desktop flow chart that we're using for the online account just to see the flow of the forms when i'm looking at the revenue cycle uh here this is usually the cycle that's going to end with some kind of deposits increasing to the checking account due to goods and services provided to customers then the easiest system i would have would be one in which there we have like gig work so that a deposit was just made into the system by like youtube and we wait till it clears the bank and then we record it with a deposit form in that case we're not going to have any differences in our books than what's on the bank because we made our books from the bank but if we're at a cash register situation we could have an issue because in that case we want to record the sales at the cash register as they are made and might be receiving multiple forms of payment such as cash such as checks such as credit cards now if we're getting the payments all the time in the exact same format as they will be shown on the bank statement then we can deposit the sales receipt directly into the checking account as though it's a deposit but oftentimes that won't be the case at least for some types of payments such as credit cards and cash for example so for those items if we use the sales receipt to deposit them directly into our bank account it's going to be a problem for reconciling because the bank isn't going to have each individual sale deposited in that way. Instead, they're going to have a grouping of all the cash that you deposited at the end of the night as one lump sum or all the payments that the credit card decided to group and possibly take a fee from that they then put into the checking account as one lump sum. That's why you need to use that clearing account that we talked about uh, in order to in order to take it in and out of the clearing account to make the deposit in the same format that it's going to be appearing on the bank statement. So if you find yourself here, we're at the reconciliation and it's like, okay, now I have to check off multiple deposits uh, on my side to tie out to one deposit over here on the bank statement, then you're going to have to do what you have to do here and then going forward, 
fix your accounting process so that so that that you're grouping your payments here on the sales receipt into the clearing account and then taking it out of the clearing account and putting it into the bank in the same format that will be on the bank statement. So let me just show you that one more time. If I go to the balance sheet here, this is the clearing account. So when you make sales, it would go into here. And if I go into that account, you can see that it's gonna go, uh, it's going, this account is going up with the payments. These are the payments on the invoices from customers. And then it's going up with sales receipts, the transactions where we get money at the point of sale at like a check cash register. And then it's going down when we deposit, transferring it out of this account into the bank account. As we transfer it out of this account to the bank account, we can group multiple sales items so that it's deposited at one lump sum into the bank account. If there were fees, such as credit card fees, you can go down here and say that you had bank, I'm not gonna record this, but bank service charges and say that that was removed so that the net amount that hits your checking account will match what's on the bank statement. If it doesn't, again, you're gonna, you're gonna end up with some messy reconciliations. All right, I'm gonna close that out. Do you wanna leave without saving? I'm gonna say yes and go back on over. Now, considering that that, that is all uh, situated, then it should be really easy, but let's consider what the bank knows about if, for example, you're using bank feeds to help you with the bank reconciliation or possibly record the transactions. When we're looking at the deposit side of things, uh, if you just deposit cash into the checking account, you're at, a, you're at the, 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 the register, you take the money, you deposit it into the bank at the end of the night. What does the bank know then? They only know the lump sum of the deposit and the date that you put the money into the bank. So if you pull and use bank feeds, that's what you're gonna have to tie into, th those two amounts. It's not gonna, you're not gonna know like the customer or any other detail, just those two things, right? Uh, if on the other hand, it's an electronic transfer, you're getting paid with electronic transfers of some kind, then the bank is gonna know the deposit amount, it's gonna know the date of the transfer, which will typically be pretty close to the date that the transfer like was facilitated, right? And, and uh, it might have in the memo information that can help you to determine who gave you the money, which gives you a little bit more information to do the reconciliation uh, process. So also just realize that these dates here are always gonna be either on the same day or most likely after the dates in our system if we're using a full service accounting system because a full service accounting system would be one in which we make the deposit on our end record it and then we use the bank feeds or bank reconciliation to match to the to what's on the bank side and it takes a few days even with an electronic transfer for for our side to clear the bank so we would expect the date for the deposits if they were electronic transfers or even if they were us depositing money directly into the bank to be close but possibly not exact to the date in our system and it's always going to be a little bit later on the bank side than our side if that's not the case in our practice problem it's because you know it's a practice problem so bear with us on the practice problem so that's going to be the general idea we're just going to tick and tie these out now if i go back on over here we have our filtering options. Uh, so, so we have some filters in place. Notice that we, we have uh, the information that nothing in our system after uh, January, it's not showing us the February transactions. That makes sense because we don't want to. So if I select the filter, we can see our filters goes up through January. That makes sense because uh, if we entered something in February, there's no possible way that the bank would, would have a transaction before we entered it. They would have to read our minds and enter the transaction first. So there's never gonna be a transaction in theory in February, unless there was a date problem in the data input that should have, that's gonna clear in January, right? There's that, that can't happen because so, so that means that we can pretty much always have this end date in place as of the date of the reconciliation and not take into consideration transactions happening after the cutoff date. We also have these filters here 
that allow us to basically focus in on the deposits or the payments. In our case, we're going to be looking at the deposits. You might be able to hide the screen up top, which gives you a, a, a squished up look, which is nice. So we can kind of zoom in a bit. And then we're just going to tick and tie each of these out. It's always useful to go from the bank statement to the books, because remember, this seems simple, but, but it, it actually gets a little confusing. We know that the things on the bank statement have to be on the books. The things on the books don't have to be on the bank statement. Therefore, go from the bank statement to the books, right? So here's 65,000 here, and then here's 65,000 here. Boom, check those two off. You can see that it increases the deposit amount, impacts this difference category. And so then I'm gonna go back on over here and I'll highlight this and, and make, it, make it green. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one and say, I'm over here. I'm gonna make that green. Can I, how do I make it green? Boom, I know there's a way, there it is. Okay, so there's that one. And then I'm gonna go back on over and say, okay, the next one, I should be going from the bank to the books. The next one is 50,000 on five one. So then I'm gonna go over here and say, okay, there's the 50,000. It cleared here on, I'm sorry, five one, one five, I think. I got it backwards, sorry about that. That half, I do that quite often. So here's the 50,000. So we're gonna say, all right, there's the 50, boom, that's done. And then on 757085 on 123, so 757085, that's why I like accounting, by the way, because if you get things, there's a, there's a double entry accounting system that gets, solves your backwards <laughs> problem when you see things backwards. 127, uh, 124 is 20,500. So then we're just going to go 20,500, uh, 120. It went in our books before it cleared the bank. So there it is. So we're going to say boom, and that's it. All right. So now we can just tick that one off. And, and so notice what, what happened here is we've got everything on our, on our bank statement we have found somewhere in our books. However, we have one that of deposit in our books that was in January that is not on the bank statement. So, so then the question, is that a problem? Well, it's something that we would want to look into clearly, uh, but it possibly isn't a problem because maybe I entered that transaction on our side and it hasn't cleared the bank yet. How can we solve for that? Well, we can go to our online banking system and basically, and just see if it cleared in February. If it cleared in February, then it doesn't mean I'm gonna check it off in January. It means that that's an outstanding item as of the cutoff date of January 31st. It's one of the reconciling items. It's just gonna be a timing difference. So in that case, we're gonna say, well, that's good, no problem. That's just gonna be one of our reconciling differences. Now, if I add these up now, it, it comes up to our deposits. We have four deposits for uh, 143.70.85. That should tie out to what we have here, 143.70.85. Perfect. Okay, so now also note that the beginning balance isn't working right now. So if I, if I was to go back on over here, on the first bank reconciliation, this is a deposit. So what we're gonna end up doing at the end is just adding that 25,000 which means that our balance here is going to show deposits of 168, 70, 85 instead of a beginning balance plus the deposits, right? And so we could still do that and that'll be fine. That'll mean that these two will be combined together. But I'll do that in the last bit when we, in the last part of this practice problem on the first month, we'll have to adjust for this beginning balance 30,000. So right now I'm gonna say, okay, I got this good. This one is good. The deposit side is good. Then I'm gonna do all the decreases, which is usually the most, more difficult side. If your deposits are properly being grouped together, the deposits should be easy to reconcile. The, the outflows, usually you're gonna have more of them and possibly different formats of them. Credit cards coming through to the bank from customers versus checks coming through from customers and electronic transfers. So there's a lot more variance oftentimes with the outflows. You're also going to have fees from the bank. You might be withdrawing money outside as well. So that's usually going to have different formats that you'll have to deal with. And so we'll do that and we'll tie out to this number. Once we get those two tied out, then we'll deal with this 30,000 and the 25,000 on our side. 
recording it as a deposit, but also dealing with these outstanding items, which will include these two checks that have cleared here uh, that we discussed in the prior presentation. So we're going to say, so we're going to say that, uh, that this looks good for now. I'm going to, I'm going to expand this and we did this bit of it. Next time we're going to move to the payment side of things. If we look at all the transactions, this is what we have thus far. Notice that QuickBooks is great because you can also just say, I'm going to save it for later. And so we'll say save for later and we'll continue. We haven't done anything to the, the balance sheet or the income statement. We haven't recorded any new transactions yet. Sometimes in the bank reconciliation process, you will have to, if there's something on the bank side that isn't on your side for the deposits, that might be something like interest, for example. They might have interest that you haven't recorded, although you might, if you have bank feeds on, you probably pick that one up too, because the bank feeds will help you to, to pick up those, those items that you're not normally picking up in your accounting system, such as uh, interest. But we didn't have to do that this time. Next time we will have that on the, on the outflows, we'll have a couple of these items and these two and these two will not show up on our side, even though they're on the bank statement and we'll have to deal with that problem, possibly making adjusting entries for them.